Hello and welcome to another video. So this week I'm doing something a little different than what I have been doing. I am making this a voiceover video with a slight time lapse. So not too much, but right now we're at 1.5 times speed. And that's where I'm going to keep it for now. We'll see, I might adjust as this video goes on. But basically, I decided to do this as a voiceover because not only did the spread take me a really long time to put together, but I also was like concentrating really hard while I did this. I had a vision and I had an idea and I just kind of really wanted to focus on getting that together and not worrying about how long the video was going to be or if I was saying enough stuff or how many silences I would have to edit out, that kind of thing. So I did decide to do this as a voiceover which is what I am doing now. So the week I am planning is the week of November the 30th through December the 6th. I can't believe it's already December. It's wild. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing here. And I am working with a planner challenge this month. So I'm really excited to participate in the, I think it's called Planable Planner Challenge or something like that. The hashtag for December is hashtag planable December 2020 if you're on Instagram and maybe YouTube I don't know I'll probably have that hashtag as part of this video but anyway basically for each week of December and and each week of like multiple months they host this challenge fairly regularly there is a prompt and the challenge is to interpret that prompt however you want but put it into a planner spread somehow and so for the first week of December, the prompt is sweater weather. And I wanted to work with scrapbook paper this week. So I went in and I found a scrapbook paper pad that I bought from Michaels a few weeks back. It is called Bright Night. And so it was full of these like Christmassy neutral kind of patterns. And I thought when I bought it that it would be really fun for planner spreads. And so I flipped through it and I found this sweater knit pattern that I thought would fit that prompt so well. So I knew that I wanted to use this and I wanted to use a lot of it. But I also wanted to try something different from what I've done so far with scrapbook paper. So I have experimented with using it as a background. I have experimented with using large blocks of it like across the middle from a couple of weeks ago, but I have not experimented with using just lots of the little squares, basically the boxes. So I cut the scrapbook paper down into the right size boxes and I got eight of them. And then I decided to arrange them diagonally across my pages. And earlier, you kind of saw me fiddling around with the placement. I finally decided on this one starting at the topmost box on Monday, moving down diagonally, and then moving back up in the last half of the week. And I really like this. I feel like the boxes, I have not so far put a ton of boxes in my happy planner, especially the full box, like decorative boxes. But I feel like this works for this spread because the sweater pattern is as neutral as it is. And what I mean by that is that the the pattern is not overwhelming. So even though I have a lot of this pattern and a lot of the boxes fully covered, I don't feel overwhelmed by like everything on the page. I don't feel like I've put too much in. At least that's how I did it. And then here I realized that I actually put that box in the wrong place. So the box being on the top of Thursday was there when I was playing around with a couple of different formats and then I didn't slide the boxes back where they belonged. So I had to pull that up. Luckily the glue didn't do too much damage. It didn't really rip the paper. It left a weird texture, but once the glue dried, it was fine. And then I fixed that and continued my diagonal pattern. So then basically based on how neutral the pattern was and the black numbers that I used to date my pages, I ultimately decided that I wanted to do a very neutral spread for this week. And so it's entirely in black and white with like some marble pattern, but that's mostly like whitish gray. 
I've never done that before, I don't think. I have never done just black and white. And I really, really liked how it turned out. So that combined with this new thing that I was doing, just, I wanted to put a lot of effort into this spread and make it really nice. So that's why we're doing a voiceover for this week. When it comes down to plans, <laughs> there are none. This week is the week after Thanksgiving break. And so school stuff, right? I, my teacher, so I'm going back to work next week. And we just got word that we are going to be remote until after Christmas. So that's wild. But it also means that next week is like, I don't know what we're doing. I, I don't know what I'm doing in class. I don't know what, if anything, the school might be doing. Like any meetings and events that were planned, how and if they're still happening next week. I don't know. I don't know anything. It's been Thanksgiving break. I have not thought about it. You know, I've tried to kind of keep my mind off it. Monday is now a faculty work day. So when I get in on Monday, I will figure out what the day is going to be like, what the week is going to be like, and how my class will run remotely, which I have ideas about. I'm not completely lost at this point. I've, I've done this before, but uh, it's par partially frustrating, but also necessary. You know, like I'm frustrated that it has to happen, but 100% get why it has to happen. Cases in my area have just been going up. They're expected to get worse after the holidays. And even at my school, we've been able to keep the case count quite low. I think surprisingly low, but they're ticking upwards. And so people are like, they were scared before they made the official like declaration that we weren't coming back. And I think that now that we are fully remote for this last part of the year, people are just, they're going to feel a little better, which I get. I'm one of them. I was pretty nervous towards the end of the like classes right before Thanksgiving. And so knowing that I don't have to go back on campus with even half capacity, it's, it's pretty nice um, because of the holidays and because of how cold it is. It just, it just bums me out because I like working at the school and technically I can still be on campus. Like teachers are allowed to work in their classrooms and while I prefer to do that on like adapted schedule days, like we had one day a week that was remote for these past like three or four weeks, I would go onto campus and work in my classroom for those days. But now that we're fully remote, it just feels kind of depressing to go work in my classroom all by myself. Because even when I do that, a lot of teachers do opt to work at from home because of the commute. Like, I'm very lucky and have a very, very short commute. My school is only a seven minute drive from my apartment. But I know teachers who commute 30 minutes each way, 40 minutes. And so 100% makes sense for them to just stay at home if they don't have to make that drive. But that means that the campus is really quiet and there's almost nobody there. And uh, if that's going to be how it's going to be every single day, because now we're fully remote for the next few weeks, I'm just kind of like, I don't want to be in a ghost town of a school. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm probably going to end up working from home, which has its pros and its cons, but that's the story. That's why this is going to be a very decorative spread with not a lot of plans in it because I don't know what's happening. And yeah, there's just in part because nothing is happening. So while I was saying all of that, I started to look through my botanicals sticker book. So I got the botanicals sticker book uh, from Joanne's as part of that 60% off sale they had uh, two or three weeks ago. I love this book. It has a lot of very bold, dark colors, and it especially has a lot of black and white. So this sticker book is the one that I'm referencing for everything that's not the scrapbook, scrapbook paper, basically. Um, except for the dates, which came from the memory keeping um, sticker book. So I've pulled in a few accents. So I decided to put some leaves on top of a couple of the sweater boxes to add some extra pattern to them. I also pulled in a couple of marble lined 
helpful boxes for just extra space to write. You know, the, the lines are a helpful guide and I thought that the marble matched what was going on here. Then I added one final sweater box at the bottom of the sidebar just to complete this area and I think that that looks pretty cool. I liked it. This sidebar is one of my favorites. I think that it is very neat, very clean, but still decorative. You know, like I think it looks nice. So I put that down there and now I'm adding a couple of headers. So I have this today triangle that I am offsetting on the lined box and I'm doing the same thing to the other side. Basically, I kind of relied on a lot of symmetry for this spread. So the leaves are kind of symmetrical. They're like, they're balanced. One is on the bottom right, one is on the top left. And then the marble boxes, they're on opposite corners of each other, like that kind of balance. Maybe it's balance more than symmetry is the word that I'm looking for. So yeah, I did that. Then I found this long floral strip sticker that I decided to stick on this box. And basically from here, I kind of committed to wanting to have some kind of floral line drawing in every single sweater box because I thought that would add more dimension to the boxes. It would keep them matching, but also vary them a bit because I put different stickers in different places it was all still neutral and it added some flowers and like some prettiness without making it too unseasonal you know because the flowers are black and white i felt like i could use them without this becoming super springy or something like that which is why i haven't used a ton of flowers so far except for i think one week i used a dark palette floral sticker set thingy um, because I think of flowers and I think of spring. But here, because they were black and white, and they were just line drawings, I think it worked out. I really liked how this came together. They are on the edge of too hard to see, but that makes them subtle more than completely invisible, at least the, the way I'm able to see them. So I put a few more on Wednesday's box, Thursday's box, picked one for Friday. And now they basically all have them except for that sidebar box right there, which I am fixing right now. All right. And then what else do I do? I pulled in a couple of quote stickers, but I don't know what I do next. And at this point, now that I've gotten through a lot of backstory, I actually might speed up the time lapse just a little bit so i think we're going to move into two times speed okay so i sped up the video just a little bit and what i've got here is a box that i'm pretty sure is meant to fit a mini happy planner like it's supposed to be able to go across either along one of the vertical boxes or across a horizontal. I'm not 100% sure, but it was definitely not quite sized for the classics. It was a little small um, in the width, and then it was too like awkwardly long. However, I made it work. So I flipped it vertically and then let it kind of take up and be centered on the rest of the space on Friday, and I really like how that came out. I feel like it brought a bit more of the marble pattern in, which I wanted to do, and then it also, I don't know, it just added a bit more interest to that, those couple of boxes without adding color or too much pattern. So then I added a square, I think it's a monthly box, up on Wednesday and offset it just a bit. It has this really cool floral pattern in the background, but it is still black and white. So I liked that. And then I have this quote sticker and I really liked it and I wasn't sure where to put it. <laughs> and I ultimately decided to kind of put it half on Monday, half on Tuesday to fill in those two boxes, which took up a lot of writing space. I originally thought I was going to use that lined marble box to write, and now I covered it up. But I like it. I like that the quote is only half on the box. I don't know why. It just, I don't know, it's kind of cool that it's half falling off. At least I like the way that it looks. So I put that there. And then because there was now this awkward white space there, I added one more floral element 
Over on Friday, I added a sticker that says Dream Big as just a little title header thing for this vertical sticker that I put down there. And then at some point previously, I also added a sticker across the three weekend days that says On to the Next Adventure, which I thought was a fun weekend sticker. It wasn't technically like a weekend banner kind of official sticker, but it marks like the end of a week, the beginning of the next one kind of thing, which is why I chose to put it over there. And then I am using this. This is like the only thing happening next week. On the third is a colleague's birthday who I have been working quite closely with. And so I just wanted to remember to wish her a happy birthday. So I put that important sticker on Thursday to mark that. And then on Tuesday, I added a remember sticker for the only other important thing happening this week, which is that Tuesday is when the remote schedule starts. So I just wanted to make sure I noted that like Monday, I wasn't going to see students because it was a teacher work day. And then Tuesday, I would see students, but it would be on the remote version of the schedule, which is different from what we have been using. And we don't start on the first day. We start with a day two schedule is what it's called. And I think that's the third schedule change this year. So yeah, if not the fourth. So just wanted to make sure I didn't forget that because it would be really, really easy to start getting all the schedules mixed up. As it is a couple of days ago, not days, a couple of weeks ago, I missed one of my classes. I co-teach a class, sort of co-teach, I'm mostly observing a class that I'm going to teach next spring on my own. So I'm observing the teacher who's currently teaching it and it it's not in my classroom. So I'm sitting there in my classroom, my classroom's empty, students don't come in because I'm like, it's my free period, I don't have to be anywhere. No, students weren't in my classroom because I was supposed to be in another classroom with my co-teacher and observing this particular lesson and I missed it and I was like, oh my god. <sighs> but he was understanding about it and like it wasn't a big deal because I don't actually work with the students in that class, I just observe him. So it all worked out, but I was just like, oh my goodness. So that's why I write down the schedule every single day. And I wanted to mark that there. Now I'm bringing in this stencil that I have wanted to use for weeks and I always forget that I have it. So I bought it on Etsy. And I bought it because I was, I really liked um, how Planning with Bumble uses lines and checklist boxes, but she uses a Happy Planner, Happy Planner stencil that is often out of stock. And it came into stock like one time and I didn't have the money for it and uh, it was just wild. It's uh, the shipping. I didn't want to pay shipping on this stencil. So ultimately, I searched Etsy and I found these stencils by a shop called... I think it's on this stencil. Called Courtly Cuts. And I can link them down below if I remember. But it's a really nice stencil. They're very small. I got one with lines only and one with lines and checkboxes. And here I'm just filling in some checkboxes so that I can make some to-do lists. But it's a very nice stencil so far. I've only used it in this one spread. Sorry, my head and my messy hair keep getting in the way. I've only used it in this one spread, but I really liked it. And it worked out well. It's just a thin plastic. But what I really like about this is that it comes cut on the side so that it can snap into your planner and you don't ever have to lose it basically um, is what I like about it. They had a lot of different designs so they have it for the classic I think the big and checklist lines and then also like multiple sizes so the stencils I got are meant to fit in a single box and the width of a single box but they also have some that can let you draw lines across multiple boxes like two or three which can be helpful if like you want to turn your planner into a lined planner or you're doing a lot of journaling or you know you want boxes and lines in every single day and it's easy to draw one long line instead of moving the stencil a lot. So there's a lot of things they got going on and I really enjoyed using this stencil this week. I liked that it let me add some functional elements without messing up the color palette. Like I didn't have to add 
anything that wasn't a floral. I didn't have to add any color because I just used my black pen and it worked out. And then because I get this question every every now and again, um, someone is curious about the pens that I use. The pen I'm using in this video is a Simply Gelded subscription pen. So this one I got in the, I think it was the October subscription box. And I really love the Simply Gilded pens, especially the newer ones. So it's only within the last maybe year that they've had the version of the pen where the cap will um, rest on the back. And I really love these pens. I like the weight of them. They're metal, so they're pretty heavy. They are very pretty. I love the tip size. It's a five millimeter. And the ink is so nice. The ink is black, but not too, 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 too dark. It's like a shade lighter than true black. I really like it. The only downside to the ink is that it will transfer if your pages are too smooth. So that was the issue I had with the plum paper paper and why I didn't use this pen with it or didn't like using this pen with that paper because the ink will like rub off onto your other pages if you write on the back of a page you've already written on. And I don't like that transfer. This paper isn't quite so smooth, so I don't have that problem as much. And so I really like using it. The one downside to this pen is that, at least to me, the refills are expensive. They're $2 on the Simply Gilded website. But they have sales. And so their Black Friday sale was like 25% off. And I bought like a year's worth of pen refills. I think I bought like 25 so that I didn't have to find a new pen because I've been trying to find a new pen that had cheaper refills or was cheaper to buy but I still liked that still looked nice and I could not find one so I fixed that problem by buying some refills during one of their sales and now you will probably only see me using these pens because I have no like if I didn't use one of these pens it was because I didn't want to run out of ink but now I have plenty of ink, so these are the pens you'll see in my videos. I have a few different styles, and I love them. So that's the pen I'm using. Now I'm just jotting in a few to-dos. The layout is basically done. All the stickers that I'm going to put are down, and I'm just adding some notes. So a plan with me video going up on Monday. I also noted that Monday is a work day for teachers, so it's not a class day. Tuesday, I'm marking the start of the remote schedule and two bills, my fair loot renews and rent is due. Thursday, I'm marking in that colleague's birthday, as well as a meeting that I have in the evening. And then on Friday, a November flip due should go up, hopefully. As well as the fact that Fridays and Rin, we have advisory lunch, and they're going to be a little different on the remote schedule, but we do still have advisory lunch. Um, it's just going to be on Zoom. So I wanted to mark that. I have put my planner pages back on my discs and the last thing I'm marking is in the sidebar. I wanted to note that this was a spread I was doing for a planner challenge with a particular prompt. So I wrote that over in the sidebar. But that completes this spread. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!